everybody, Andrew Cuneo here. Today is day one of the historic qualifier. I'm going to be playing Tainted Pact, if you haven't guessed already. I have made a few updates to this deck to reflect the changes. Historic's gotten shaken up a lot by the nerfing of Bowmaster and uh, the nerfing of the One Ring. I had kind of given up on playing this deck when Bowmaster was just a 4 of in most decks because it was just too painful to try to fight through it because this deck has a lot of card drawing in it. You kind of have to play a lot of card drawing to assemble your two-card combo reasonable amount of the time. But now that Bowmaster is gone, Historic's very different. I'm expecting to play against a lot of blue-red Wizards decks and uh, mostly mono-green, like, ramp Karn decks. Sometimes they splash the second color, but it, it's just a green Nykthos deck that's trying to put Karn the Great Creator in play. So I made a bunch of changes to my deck to facilitate that, uh, playing against those. Uh, mostly in the form of just like trying to make my deck cheaper. I'm playing a, a decent amount of one, one one removal. Like I've got cut down in my main deck now, which I, I didn't used to play cards like that uh, when Historic was less about kind of aggressive cheap creature decks. The Blue Red Wizards deck is really aggressive. You, you need a lot of removal against it. Also, I've cut Shielded from my deck entirely, be specifically because of this card, Flame of Anor, which the Blue Red Wizards decks play. I used to like Shielded a lot as a way to kind of stabilize and then win against more aggressive decks, but the fact that the best aggressive deck is playing a card that can just kill Shielded, and oftentimes will kill it and they draw two cards, just Shielded didn't have any good matchups left, I would say. So that's gone. Um, I've changed my Mendex Sweeper to Path of Peril over Languish or Ritual of Soot because this kills basically everything you care about out of the Blue Reds Wizards deck, and it's one mana cheaper than, you know, the four mana options. Uh, what, is there anything else that's particularly interesting to say? I guess I have Mind Spike in my deck. I didn't used to play this card. I, I wanted another card that could make my opponent discard their Karn. Um... The only new card I've got from Lost Caverns of Ixalan is I've got somewhere in here. I've got the blue black creature land, Reckless, Restless Reef. What one other thing that's it makes me feel like it's less important to play a card like Shieldred. I used to like having ways, especially in sideboarded games, to have other ways to win the game where you weren't so heavily reliant on resolving Tainted Pact and Jace. But now I've got two pretty good creature lands and rest of this reef and hall of storm giants so you, you can win games just on the back of those and then i do also have lelia and crucius just because i think they're generally good cards uh, it's kind of crazy now I, I actually i don't even have a basic swamp in my deck anymore i'm playing with just one basic island as my only basic there are so many good dual lands now like i, I wasn't for a while, I played with a basic swamp over Underground River, but I, I decided Underground River I should probably have in my deck. Uh, looking at the sideboard, it's more cheap removal. I'm back to playing Ether Gust because it's pretty good against the mono green decks. Against those mono green decks, it's kind of annoying. You don't want to have a lot of one for one removal in your deck because the good targets are stuff like Old Growth Troll and. What's that, whatever the 5-6 guy is called that puts a land into play for 5 mana? Like they, they just aren't good targets for Go for the Throat, but Aether Gust is pretty good against them, so I'm back to playing that. Uh, I have a Pithing Needle in my deck, which my plan is to board this in against Green and Name Karn the Great Creator, but also sometimes people play Mazes End decks. Those are actually pretty good as well. And Pithing Needle is pretty good against them, right? This is one you can name lands with. Yeah. So that's the idea there, is I'm going to name Maze's End or uh, Karn the Great Creator with this. And probably I will not have it in my deck if they're not playing either of those cards. Uh, one other sweeper, and I do have a Rusko in my sideboard. I, I found this to actually kind of be like a better shield rid in a lot of matchups. Because you don't care that much if it dies, you still get the Midnight Clock, and it, it kind of runs away with the game the same way if it lives. And it, there wasn't a big difference between three toughness and five toughness in my experience in alchemy, at least in the ma or in historic in the, in the matchups where I was going to board this in. Oh, and this is one other thing that made me feel like I needed fewer alternate ways to win, 
is against the, the decks where Virtue of Persistence is going to be good. Obviously, I'm going to be boarding that in. And this is another way you can win, is you can just cast the seven mana form of this, and it will eventually win you the game. So that's the deck. Hopefully it's going to be a long video, and I'm going to get to play a lot of matches. Companion Gigantha means almost definitely they're playing Blue-Red Wizards. I'm sure you could build other decks that have Gigantha as their companion, but... It basically just means blue red wizards. Oh, this is this is the kind of hand that my deck beats. This is a pretty hard matchup. Or a close matchup. But the games where you win are the ones where you just keep them from having a creature on board for a long time and you eventually get to set up your combo. Cause they don't really at least in their main deck, they have almost nothing that can disrupt you. It's just they kill you really fast if you can't keep their creatures off the board. So them keeping a one-creature hand with no expressive iteration. I mean, this hand... I guess I can see why they didn't mulligan, but this hand is pretty bad for them. I think I'm gonna probably let them cast a spell and then kill this thing. Because I, I want to change the equation of Dreadhorde Arcanist if they happen to top deck it, or if they top deck Expressive Iteration. Those are both things I, I would definitely counter. Right top. I guess I'll use my fatal push over my drown in the lock. The drown in the lock stops Dreadhorde Arcanist and Expressive Iteration. I really want to hit a land. Alright. Crucius is kind of bad in this matchup. I'm going to be boarding it out. Just because it, uh, it dies so easily to all the cards in my deck. Give him a window to resolve expressive iteration. All right, we've got the combo now, so I'm just I need to draw a fourth land, and then I'll probably win. This is what the games where I win look like. Get another card that could kill Crucius. Uh, there's the Dreadlord Arcanist. That's unfortunate that they have to resolve that. Good that I drill land. It's, it, the thing with this deck is it... A lot of times, like, you feel like you're in okay shape, and then you just take 16 damage in one turn. Which I guess they, they would have had to draw... If they'd drawn, like, Expressive Iteration into Symmetry Sage plus... Uh, Relentless Assault. Probably wouldn't have been 14 damage, but it would have been a lot. Alright. So I need to not misclick.
So I want to leave between one and three cards left in my deck, and it's not really important that I get any particular card here. It's just important that I can win the game by plusing Jace targeting myself. Had I not drawn a land last turn, I could have conceivably just gone for the Tainted Pact to win, hoping to find an untapped land in the bottom three cards of my deck. Fortunately, I didn't have to play that way. They changed the way this UI works. I used to love dragging all the cards I was going to board in over here, I guess. It still sort of works, but the cards disappear when they're on my cursor, which I don't like. So I pretty much just want everything that can kill a creature. I don't board in Rending Volley just because it doesn't hit Dreadhorde Arcanist. It hits some of the creatures I want to kill. I think I'll have Brotherhood's End in my deck. And then I'm going to definitely board out Crucius... Lelia, just because they die so easily. Even though they're probably taking out their strangles, they're, I wouldn't be surprised if they have some play with fires in their, their deck, and they're definitely going to have Flame of Anor and probably Wizard's Lightning as well. Marset's kind of clunky, and it dies very quickly. And then I'm going to board out... I don't want to board out Thoughtseize. I do want to board out Mind Spike. Being able to Thoughtseize a creature, I think, is good enough to leave it in the deck. I have a lot of cards for this matchup. Perhaps too many. I've been boarding out Seek New Knowledge sometimes just because it, it, it can be a little bit clunky. One more card. Maybe it should just be Thoughtseize. I'm not super worried about them boarding in a bunch of counters. I mean, they're going to have some, probably, but I, I think I can just fight through them. Just a decent hand. Three ways to kill a creature. The only the one thing that could be problematic about this is I don't have any one-mana ways to kill a creature, so I can definitely fall behind. Fortunately, they've mulled. No reckless charge, nice. I think I need to keep that, even though... Untapped land would be nicer. I'm miscasting this and taking eight. It's painful. Why did I do this? This was stupid. I could have just taken taken the zero and waited for them to do something. That was dumb. I just took three extra damage for no reason. That was really dumb. Well, like, remarkably so. Probably the difference between a win and a loss. 
If I, if I had five more life here, I, I think I would be in good shape, but... And it's just putting me to the test to see if I'll be an idiot again. Come on, let me draw a land so Rusko can save me. So they played... Wizard's Lightning. Number one. They have at least three more cards in their deck, I would say, that just kill me outright. Play with fire also would kill me, obviously. I think I'm going to wait for one more land before I play Rusko. Because if I played Rusko and they just have an untapped land, I have to trade it right away with the... of the bugbear, which wouldn't be ideal. So I care about going to one. Guess I'm priced into just playing Rusko next turn. Yeah, played bad and lost. The Mace Mind Tome as a way to gain life is pretty nice, but I do have to be a little bit careful that I don't fall behind on board to get it going. I'm going to prioritize killing creatures over casting it right away. I, I, I played bad that one time, and my, now my opponent's just like, you're an idiot. I'm going to keep attacking you with my O3 just to see if you do something stupid again. Well deserved. Resolve Flame of Anor here, so I'm actually just going to take the Scry. It's pretty suspicious that they didn't get Giganta into their hand. Kenzen again, that's annoying.
The Snapcaster covers them uh, resolve, resolving Gigantha, because even though Gigantha's not very efficient, obviously this game's going to probably take a while, and I can't just let myself get hit by a 5-5. Five five. Reckless charged. No, nice. Get up here with a land. I don't think it really matters what I picked there. I suppose if they had a second Sakenzin, it would be bad. Now, even the, the second Sakenzin, it wouldn't matter for Shoji Zedek. It would be bad to pick Cut Down just because if they had an instant, it would fizzle. I did have to use my potential answer to the Gigantha, but Gigantha's a problem for a few turns from now. Probably would have played Reckless Charge last turn had they had it. Hmm, why didn't they... I guess they have Spell Pierce in their hand. So what's going on here? As you can see, though, I'm kind of getting to the point where the creature lands are going to be a little bit scary for them. It's a little scary for me to tap out to hit them for seven, but it might be worth doing. Especially if they just tap out to play Giganta at some point. Attack them for four. I don't think so. Problem is, if I do that and they just go land Gigantha, I change the equation and they spell pierce it and I can't spell pierce back. Being overrun by Soul Scar Mages. Probably get some good use out of this cling to dust. I don't think I want to cling main phase just to try to hit a land in case it's a tapped land. I don't think there's anything else I would cast. I'm 100% going to block as soon as they attack with the Soul Square Mages. Uh, I would like to remove... I guess Expressive Iteration. They can't get their Dreadhorde Arcanist big enough to recast the Expressive Iteration, which is kind of what their deck is built around doing. I've already used my Snapcaster Mage, uh, which is my main thing that matters for the Graveyard. I guess the Takanuma means I could get the Snapcaster Mage back, and that also could get other things out of my graveyard, but it's not a super important decision when I'm exiling there once the Snapcaster Mage has been used. I 
The way this game is playing out, I don't feel that likely to combo. Flame of Unmore. I'd like to change the equation. I'd prefer that to not resolve. I'm gonna just take anything good that I find here. Uh, if I the, as soon as I hit a, the the Jace, I'll take that as well because I just don't want it to fizzle. Rusko counts as anything good. Cast this right. Five other. Yeah, I'll be spell piercing flame of the noir. Were I them, I would probably kill Rusko and draw two cards. Definitely think killing Rusko was worth it. The draw two cards versus blow up the clock is that's a tougher choice. This brother of Dend is looking a little bit awkward. Are we finally gonna get to see Giganta in action? Should I play this and just take a Jace? I don't think so. At this point, I might want to use it to find something else. And I also... I have a decent shot of just drawing Jace, and if I drew Jace, I would just try to combo kill them immediately. That seems fine. Definitely not interested in attacking and trading Rusko with Den of the Bugbear. Just because it, they would get to just use the mana to activate the Den of the Bugbear for free, essentially. Whereas here, they're not going to have access to it to block this turn. That's annoying. Get him to sideboard cards. I will end of turn tainted packed just for anything good. Cause it'll it's gonna the clock's about to go off. Pretty sure I can block this thing with the restless reef. In the battle of the creature lands, the 4-4 four, four death touch reigns supreme over the 3-2. Well, that spoils all of the boost of fun. This is all just an illusion. Wait a second. Clock is going to go off. Before the Tainted Pack resolves. Okay, this is fine.
And I don't have the J activation on the stack, but I'll just activate it after the 10 impact empties my deck. That was the first time I've had to worry about a uh, midnight clock resolving in the middle of activating my combo. Which I guess there's probably no way for that to mess it up, but I had to think through it. I don't trust myself after what I did in game two. It would have been nice to have a fatal push. Not a great hand. Unknown opponent, no companion. They have Mulligan. I think I'm still going to keep. If this is mono green with a good draw, they're going to run me over real fast. But they're already on a Mulligan. Green blacks. It's probably a Yawgmoth deck. I had to guess. Did not need another land. This is looking more and more like a Yawgmoth deck. Whoa, a Tarmogoy. This is not a Yawgmoth deck. Uh oh, playing that tap didn't help me at all because I'm going to have to play Drown Catacomb next turn, probably. I didn't have to do that. So I changed my mind and I'm going to cycle Xander's Lounge. This was not a very good land sequencing. It's very unlikely to matter. I have so many lands that the fact that this is eventually going to come into play tapped is not likely to be a big deal. This was not the best way to do this. Please keep me away from the lands. Scariest Liliana of the Veil in the world. You won't be outsmarting me. Drop it. And eventually, alt, but I'm not super worried about that. I guess maybe I should be a little worried about it. But that's a problem for two turns from now. Prismari Command and Watery Grave. I hope I can do better than that. I can. One thing that's a little bit rough here is that now I do have the Hall of Storm Giants to potentially kill the uh, Liliana, but they can chump with their Restless Cottage. Of course, if they're doing that and then ulting the Liliana, I'm not, not actually in that bad of shape. Let's try this. 
Like they're gonna have four lands and a one ring, and I'll have probably three lands and a Jace. Two lands and a Jace. This is probably a better split on their part. I choose a pile to sacrifice. I think I need more lands. Sacrifice pile two. Sure. Everywhere. Stand with us. So I kept the sensor because I was worried about them resolving a shieldred or another one ring. I think I'm going to lose now. Because the the actual the, their life total is getting low enough that it's a little scary for them. Oh, they still get the food and they get to exile something from my graveyard. Or is this one at tap? It's one at attacks, I think. Virtue of persistence. to them. <sighs> Nobody knows, Domino. I'm tired of your secrets. Please give me the new knowledge. My current knowledge is not so good. Drop it. I might be able to kill them with Lelia. 
Let's see what they do with their turn. My voice beckons to all worlds. Still in my deck, I'm pretty sure. This isn't going to work. Good snap, edict, reacher. I think that is okay. I don't think that there's a... I guess my other option was to just hope that my second Jace was in the bottom of my deck. I don't think I need to play that desperately. Especially because I have this land as well. Six life currently. They have to have shieldreds in their deck, right? I guess this land also. Oh no, it doesn't hurt them because of the Ren. I had edicted them before they could have attacked with that restless cottage. This would be a much better spot for me. I drew a shoulder. Or maybe they have one in the yard. Hmm. My step. Harness the connections between all things. You won't be outsmarting me. I'm not getting chopped a second time. I'm conceding. This doesn't give me a way to kill them. I don't think there's a way that I can possibly kill them. I did say that I was only going to board in Needle against Karn and... What was the other card? Oh, Mazes End. But they actually had a lot of Needle, needle targets. So I th think I will board it in here. Because I can Needle any other Planeswalkers and the One Ring. And then they're just like the most mid-range deck in the world. I want Soul Guide Lantern. It's not... Doesn't really work very rent. It's good against the ultimate of Ren and Realm Breaker, but that's about it. I probably want Blood Chief's Thirst. So I can hit Planeswalkers. I want Ether Gust. 
Probably not. I don't like having Ether Gust in my deck if they have they're gonna have black discard because they a lot of their permanents doesn't even work against. I don't think I want Path of Peril or Prismari Command. I don't have Cast and Fire in my sideboard anymore. Uh, probably don't need Mind Spike. Don't really want Spell Pierce in my deck though. Maybe I just want Negate. That seems pretty good. One card I don't have from Lost Caverns of Ixalan is Molten Collapse. I played with it some, and I found that it was just too bad. Being, it, I mean, it's basically just Dread Boar. It, my deck is not going to descend often enough, and there's also not all that many non-creature one mana permanents to blow up. But I found that it just, the fact that it was instant speed, or it wasn't instant speed, it made, just made it too bad. Well, Galissa the Sun Slayer. Wow. Well, Alright. I guess this is a good hand if I'm going to draw a land heavy hand against their triple discard. That's kind of nice. Damaging ooze. This only grows off of creatures, right? So it doesn't make a ton of sense to minus it in the face of double discard. I should... I'll let them grow their Glissa to 3-3 and then I'll minus it. Or I'll let them grow the ooze to a 3 3 and then I'll minus the Narset. I'm a goof. Fury will only lead you astray. Put thoughtfulness before action. So I'm probably tainted pacting for something that can kill Tarmagoof. In response to a discard card. Ugh. Guess this cottage hurts. They do get the opt, which is kind of annoying. But I think it's better to get the timer goof off the board. Probably is not at all relevant that they killed the Narset. I have my deck configured to be very good against this kind of a grindy deck. I have a ton of card drawing. Is the cottage coming for me? Seems like it. 
So I think Yeah, I tend to pack it past the tended packed. My deck does not actually have a lot of ways to, to win a game right now. It's like the only way I can tend it packed again. They're both exiled. I can't taint it packed anymore. I can kill them with the Hall of Storm Giants, which would take probably three hits. They've gained a food. My Rusko and my Lelia and my Crusoe. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually... My deck is not at all in, in a spot where it could win at this point, I would say. Packed still a lot of damage. I guess I only have twenty six cards left. Conceivable if I can get this shielded off the board, I can just win with the Jace milling myself a bunch. Please, no more Shieldreds and no One Rings. That's not the worst. That's not the worst. Those who get in my way tend. I'm tired of your secrets. I'm giving Bouncing Virtue of Persistence if they top deck a land here. Doesn't really do all that much, sadly. mill myself with the, the Restless Reef. It's my cling to dust somewhere. It's this target. It does target. It's been kind of a crazy game. I can Odawara the Virtue of Persistence and just shut it off for a turn. 
which is probably a pretty good use of a land and then four mana. Especially if they brick this turn and don't do anything. Or if they spend all their mana on scavenging ooze in their upkeep for no reason. These have been weird games. That first game I thought I was going to win after getting Lilian ultimated, and then I did not. Now I thought I was going to be in horrible shape to win after Tainted Pact kind of exiled almost everything that my deck could do to win the game. But now I actually feel like I'm in okay shape. Talking Numa. Wait, do I know about... Is there another Jace in my deck? There's another Jace. Alright, I'm gonna play this and just draw cards in. Off the tome. That's not that scary. Be swift. We haven't much time. Oh man, the Restless Cottage. I thought I'd stopped it. But I hadn't. Fight back! Likes a bully. Must hold on. So if I go draw a cycle, I get the second chase into my hand. Which is nice because it means it doesn't matter if this Jace dies, although their deck may not be capable of killing the Jace in this spot. Maybe if they have the way to get rid of Pithing Needle, they could have. What's it called? Terra Sunder? Now, because they forced me to spend all my mana on cling to dust, I'm gonna wanna scry so I draw the Jace naturally. Okay, that doesn't do anything. There's nothing important. Shielder makes it exciting. It's reasonably happy with how it was sideboarded. 
I maybe want another card that can just kill a creature now that I know they have Scavenging Ooze in their deck as well. Cut down seems bad. I should not have had that in my deck. Innocent Blood seems better. These things kill Galissa. No, I don't think I... I think Ritual so it's too weak. Or it's weaker than the things I'm playing. Probably gonna want to play this as a land. They have a bunch of three mana planeswalkers in their deck. I think it's definitely worth killing that. might wind up being able to drown in the lock the Tarmogoyf, depending on what they do with their turn. I care about killing that delighted halfling now? Probably not. I didn't cycle because I wasn't sure I wanted to cycle this land and it would grow the Tarmogoyf. Tarmogoyf is giving me a beating. This is a, this is a bit of a nombo here. One lessons first Tarmogoyf. Considering just hard casting the Jace here, I think I'm going to Soren's Ransom first, though. Graveyard hate continues. So they do have two mana, so if they have a card like Shieldred's Edict. And I find a Tainted Pact here, I would lose instead of win. I think I would just go for it. Depends on what else I find.
probably this is going to be good enough to win. The only problem would be if they drew a discard card this turn. I can beat Shieldred's Edict now. Instead of cycling cards. So I want to go down to one card left in my deck. Probably should have land like a Lorien revealed. Or played Impulse. Just to see if I could find a redundant cycling card so I could beat Double Shielded's Edict. I think I'm gonna lose to Double Shielded's Edict if that's what they have. Alright, it's looking good. We have a blue red land, but no Gigantha. It's probably not blue red wizards. Some sort of Arclight Phoenix deck. I haven't played against one of those in a while. I think it's not well set up against a deck like that, so hopefully that's not what it is. Is it a blue red wizards gamer who forgot their Giganta? Whoa! I don't know what this is gonna be. It's gonna be some sort of crazy deck. Would someone want care about Mizix's mastering this thing? Who can really say? And there's the battlefield discover three. Maybe I'm supposed to be able to figure out what they're doing now, but I, I don't even want to know. I'm going to leave up Archmage's Charm. I am pretty close to killing them with Lelia plus Tainted Pact, although it's not a guaranteed kill because I can hit double Jace. I could do it over two turns, or I could do it in one turn. Um, because I have the Archmage's Charm, I'm going to try to see if they tap out again and then do it in one turn. They'd be Discover 3 for that would justify putting all this garbage in their graveyard. There isn't a living in, for instance. Well, Mizzix is Master, is the living in, for instance, in sorceries. And that costs 4. 
Oh, I don't know what this card does. the land I needed, but it's too late. I needed the land before combat. I'm sure someone who's watching this knows what they're trying to discover into, but I have yet to figure it out. I would assume that it's something that's quite bad for me. So they're dead as long as I don't find two Jaces in my top six cards. I guess they could also have some way to interact with this thing, but you would think they would have already done that if they could. So you can take a second Tainted Pact there to like reset the, the Tainted Pact to make sure you don't lose to Double Jace. It w I hit the second Tainted Pact late enough that it wasn't going to be relevant. But if it, if it was a spot where they were tapped out and like I hit Tainted Pact as my second card, I would have just taken... I guess it doesn't matter resetting the Tainted Pact until you hit Jace. So if I'd hit like Jace and then Tainted Pact, I would have taken Tainted Pact and cast it again, and then there would have been no danger of losing. Like this... I could name Quintorius Khand. It seems like there's some form of combo deck, so I'm going to vo board as though they are a combo deck. So those are all the cards that I think are actively helpful. I mean, I guess Brotherhood's End does something... Same thing with the braid, but and I could have Rusko in my deck if I wanted to. I definitely don't want Path of Peril. Don't want Cut Down. Don't want Fatal Push. Go for the Throat. Heart Sack. I mean, they did have like that thing that makes two four fours, but I'm not going to worry about just getting beaten to death by seven mana make two four fours. Is Prismari Command good? Doesn't seem all that good. I am going to leave Edict in my deck just because it can kill a Planeswalker in addition to killing a creature. I don't really know if Soul Guide Lantern is going to be good. I feel like it probably is. But again, I don't really understand what their deck is trying to do fully. Need to cut one more card. Maybe it should just be Shieldred's Edict. You really have a lot of fiery islands in your deck. Far more than I would ever expect from one person. I 
They actually have a lot of red spells in their deck that this card can't counter because their deck is so expensive. Next turn I'll be able to play Crucius and leave change the equation up. So that's why I did not that's why I did not play Lelia that turn. Drown in the lock. That was a nice hit. Yeah, maybe not. It's only for three right now. But they are trying to discover into a three mana card. So maybe we'll do something. I think we're about to see what their deck is trying to do. A clever impersonator. Oh, is it are they trying to hit reduce to rubble? That doesn't make any sense. Trying to just chain this dude. I don't know. It, this is obviously a combo. I still don't understand what it's trying to do. But I think it's good to stop. Well, spell here is going to help me. Ether Gust certainly is, though. They took so much damage from their lands this game. I think I did three damage to them with a creature. And then they took 12 damage from their lands. I'm impressed by how much damage they took from their lands. Ah, Gigantha. I was, I was just thinking to myself, it's been a while since I've had to play against Blue-Red Wizards. But it's back. is not a good hand to have been on the draw with. This hand would be great if I was on the play, but on the draw it's probably going to be a little slow. It's also not great that I drew one of the few lands in my deck that just deals me damage. and go to seven and put a stop to this. Yeah, I think seven's enough to double divide into two cards.
Somewhat close to winning. If I draw an untapped land and they don't have a blocker. And they don't have Wizard's Lightning. Let's put them to four. I'm willing to go to four. Although, I didn't take into account that in a land that deals me damage. It makes going to four a lot worse, because it means that I would go to three, where I'd tap that for mana. Pretty likely to just kill this before it can even attack. <coughs> oh, this is the saddest Lelia ever. It can't attack. Because I would just die to the Snapcaster Mansion Reckless Charge. I don't even think there was a there isn't a one mana spell I could hit that would allow me to live. Now the question is, do I remember how I sideboarded? What 10 cards did I take out? The odds that I do this the same way twice is kind of low. I've been taking out Sensor and Thoughtseize. I actually went through a lot of iterations with this deck, which is why sideboarding is a little bit rough. Because I'm, I'm not used to exactly how I'm boarding in the, the main matchups. I am very certain you want to board out the three mana creatures in this matchup, I will say. So I put this on black, and then I get red mana from this land. That doesn't sound like the worst. I definitely want to Inquisition them turn one on the play so I can catch a creature. Oh, they have Fable of the Mirror Breaker in their deck. Yikes. I'm going to be duressing that Fable of the Mirror Breaker. And I think I'm going to Fatal Push the Symmetry Sage and just let this thing hit me for one some. Symmetry Sage deals so much damage if they have one good turn with it. Taking the one or two a turn is not great, but it's acceptable, I would say.
Come on, play around Spell Pierce. Let's sort of play around Spell Pierce. If they didn't play their Flame of the Noir. Decent Charged is, is not a very effective sideboard card against my deck, I would say. My plan is to wait and see if they play Flame of Anor here, and if they did, I would Sarn's Ransom in response. If not, I'm just going to do it at the end of the turn. Actually found like the one card that Unless Terse interacts with at least a little bit. I think they should have been hitting me harder than they have been. Like they needed they needed to try to get a little bit more offense going. The way they're playing, I think, is making it pretty easy for me to set up a winning position. I'm not even sure how I'm going to do that yet, but this feels... Pretty good. Is that a good card for me? Flame of Anor. It's not even really clear what I want here. I'm going to stop it at Jace, but it's not the be all and end all.
Get a little bit of my chump block on. So I can pay for snap spell pierce. I cannot pay for mystical dispute. Unless I find a land in the bottom. Well, I know I'm gonna draw an Odawara, so. That plays for Mystical Dispute. Double Spell Pierce. That's a problem. But they have two unknown cards. I guess they could also have Fry, which I don't really think I'm going to beat Fry this game. No, actually, I can beat Fry with Fiery Islet. So I probably want to take the card that's on top of the Odawara. It probably covers me against the most things they could have. They need, a, they need two cards to beat me, I think, here. I want this next card. Whatever it is, give it to me. Cut that guy down. Get out of my game, Soul Scar Mage. You've already lost. You just don't know it yet. It's always an answer. Now I need to win a game where I'm on the draw. Could be rough. Do I have Mystical Dispute in my deck if I know they have Snapcaster? What would it be instead of? One of these expensive card drawing cards. Maybe Brotherhood's End? I don't know. The problem with Brotherhood's End is that it's just... My, my mana base is not set up to make double red all that easy. This is really in my sideboard just because it's so good against people who are playing Retrofitter Foundry decks. If it wasn't for that style of deck, I would not have this card in my sideboard. It's a perfectly reasonable hand. They've mauled once. Gonna duress them. I, I want to see what their hand is before I. Play this Blood Chief's Thirst. Just because I don't I don't want to let a uh, Arcanist start running wild. I guess I'm positioning again. That was a somewhat close choice between Symmetry Sage and Reckless Charge. Fully Ritual of Soot, clearing away the Symmetry Sage next turn. Alright, this is an okay spot against two unknowns and a Reckless Charge in the yard. Don't have any creature lands. They do have Giganta, but they don't have enough mana to make Giganta scary quite yet. 
All right, just nice six to the face off of an empty board. Not ideal. Oh, and Tainted Pact. You're not Tainted Pact. Oh, and Tainted Pact. You're not Tainted Pact either. One unknown, it's not a land, could be spell pierce. If it's reckless charge and they draw a creature, eh, I'm not gonna play around that. I'm gonna make sure this resolves for a potential spell pierce. This is the card people used to play before Flame of Anor. I'm glad that I fatal pushed it. I forgot that card even existed. I want to start seven balling them. No, I don't think so. Not with the resolve Jason play. There's no need to do that. Should I start milling them? Probably not. This. We're not going to commit Gigantha to the battlefield. Let's try this. I'm going to just hard cast that. That doesn't make a ton of sense. Draw seven cards, then if my library has no cards in it, I win the game. I'd love to win the game. Oh, they didn't even play the Den of the Bugbear? What do they have in their hand that they think is so great? Another den of the bugbear has arrived. This one got played.
I'll take a snapcaster. Well, it's probably thinking to themselves, why hasn't this person just won the game already? And I actually haven't... ...found a tainted pack yet. I don't think I've even milled one. Oh, they, they looted their Giganta away. They think their deck has cards in it that are better than a 5 mana 5-5. Five, five. There are two Tainted Packs left in my deck. This makes the ultimate of the Jace lethal. They have Odawara in their hand, okay. Stop to that guy.
I'll put a stop to that one. Ooh, Rusko. Could have won in response to that Odawara with ten impact. I didn't think about that because I thought it was pretty hard for me to lose playing this way. Ooh, that was a good match. Ah, uh, Gigantha. Wonder what they're playing. I have a good guess. Express of iteration on turn two just to hit an untapped fourth land. Whoa! This is not what I thought they were going to be playing at all. What in the world? Alright, I won't go for a turn two expressive iteration against. I don't know what this deck is, so I, I don't know that like the coast is completely clear to just try to turn four kill them. Some sort of reanimation deck. Maybe bad. I maybe should have just left changed the equation up because they're going to play Fable the Mirror Breaker with Rush's this turn. Keep an open mind. have much to learn I think I could have played this game tighter and made it so that Shielder's Edict would not be a problem I'm just not going to try to beat Shieldred's Edict. I can beat it if I have an untapped land in exactly the right spot in my deck. So that I can cling to dust. I guess just if there's an untapped land in the bottom two cards of my deck, I can beat Shieldred's Edict. I don't think I know. I should know something about the bottom cards of my deck, but I didn't take note of the cards I was not taking off of Narset. Four cards to go. Still a ways.
Do I need this? Oh, okay, this one's an untapped land. That's good. Got some mysterious welding going on. Wasn't expecting that one. That was a beating. Let's figure out what cards I don't want in my deck. I do not want Path of Peril in my deck. What Prismari Command? It's pretty good at killing Crucius. Don't think I want Miscast. Fatal Push seems worse than Cut Down in this matchup because it, of Crucius. Do you think I want Mind Spike? Do you want Shieldred's Edict? Feels like I could maybe do better than that. Do I want Ether Gust? No. I think I might want Negate over Shieldred's Edict. So the last game was probably a case of if we were playing with open deck lists, I probably would have won where I lost instead because I would have not played around Shielder's Edict if I knew they didn't have it and could have played around Reprieve. Reprieve is a really good card, but I don't think it fits necessarily in any of the like top tier historic decks. Maybe this person's reanimation with Reprieve deck is the new top tier, though. There is some world where it makes a little bit of sense to um, instead thought seize them, but if they have multiple two drops or multiple three drops in their hand, it's a disaster. Like if their hand was a Crucius and six lands, or however many lands it would be, it would have made more sense to uh, thought seize them. Happy to trade Crucius's. But I think if I attack, they just wouldn't walk because they're ahead on life. Just drew another. 
another Crucius. see what they discard before I play this go for the throat. I'm a little bit worried they're just going to hard cast into Traxa, which is an untapped land and another treasure token they could do. So I really just want them to tap out for Atraxa here. Or just cast something. So I think I can induce that by Flame of Ignoring the Goblin Shaman. If I let them attack, they get another treasure, and then they get to card cast Atraxa, and they can hit untap Black Land plus a card like Thoughtseize, which would be very bad for me. for the win against mystery card. I think I am. That's a nice spell, but I think that my odds of winning aren't really improving by letting them untap. Gust. It's good against all their three drops, but that's probably about it. I mean, you can also e I could ether gust to hard cast a Traxa, but be a little surprised if the game comes down to that. They don't have a Giganta anymore. They what did they do to their deck to make it so Giganta doesn't work anymore? didn't see it, whatever it is. At least I don't remember it. Boo!
I'm going to hold up sensors so they don't play a three drop this turn. And then I'll probably cycle it into turn. Or they'll jam a three drop into it. And, so they have another three drop in their hand that I'll get the thought sees. Or they're about to Priest of Fell Rights it back. That makes sense. This is kind of a scary thought to use. I'm in a lot of trouble. So they're about to... discard on burial rights and get a Traxa. matter which of these two I take. Of course there's still the problem that they can just hard cast a Traxa the next turn. That's a problem for next turn though. And also I'm just getting killed and my hand is all lands. Got a lot of problems. That actually isn't as bad for me as I thought it was going to be. And that explains why they don't have Giganta anymore. Name instant. We should take me on burial rights now. It's not like it, they wouldn't be being left with a priest of fell rights in their graveyard.
I really should have done that I'm still in horrible shape. It would actually be really good if I had a uh, Heartless Axe type card in my graveyard. Alright, so we've hit one Jace, so I'm in danger of this completely bricking. It did not. Unnamed Planeswalker again. Been going so well for you. The fact that I, I chose wrong between Priest of Fell Rites and Unburial Rites because of Cling to Dust like six turns later has really screwed me. I think that was just a straight up mistake. Because actually the turn before, if they had just unearthed the Priest of Fell Rites and attacked me with it, I also would have died. And that was always a play they were gonna be able to make to just deal two damage to me. Oh, they named instant. No good. I think I can't win now. Where were you like seven million turns ago cut down? Terrible. I could have just attacked with this thing and then played cut down. Could I have? No, because I'm at one life. I wouldn't have had enough mana because of the fiery eyelet. Uh, is there any way to out of this? I don't think so. That was a hard game. I feel like my decisions mattered and I made them badly, but I think they were tough decisions. But I'm most definitely going to play Watery Grave untapped on turn one to play Consider rather than playing River Guide Pathway. It does two things. First of all, preserves the ability to play this on red, which probably I'm not going to want to do. But the other thing is I'm going to want to have changed the equation up on turn two. And I don't have to telegraph it by playing an untapped shock land on turn two. 
if I just play the shock land on turn one. Oh, this deck is so stupid. They're gonna fragment reality this thing into a Geist of St. Trapped. Alright, change of plans. I'm just gonna try to minimize how much damage I take. Saving two damage means they need one more turn to hit me. They do have some ways to like buff the Geist of St. Traft with Ethereal Armor, but most of the time they just do their goofy combo and then stop casting spells for the rest of the game. Is Impulse going to do it? I think I should take this, because I think I'm going to lose unless... If my top card is Tainted Pact, now I still die. So I die in two hits. I certainly don't have enough time to cast Impulse. I'm already dead. Alright, this was this deck is so miserable when you lose the dot roll against this deck because their their deck is so bad when they're on the draw. But on the play it's pretty good. Alright, Innocent Blood is a nice sideboard one against them, so is Ritual of Soot. Certainly on the play, Miscast is good. Honestly, stuff like Miscast and Mystical Dispute are just good always because one of the ways that my deck can win is by Shieldred's Edicting or Something like that, and you want counters to interact with Slip Out Back. Uh, definitely don't want Go for the Throat or Heartless Act. Or Cut Down. Fatal Push has, like, minor utility in that you can kill the Angel Token sometimes. Not really the best card in the world. Yeah, I'm reasonably happy with this. You might be wondering, how can their deck be consistent enough to possibly win very much? And I'm wondering the same thing. Thoughtseize is really good against them, except in the games where they get to keep... where they're, the lane line is lane line of sanctity. It's just random. Like, sometimes that's their lane line. Yeah, a lot of the games go like that, which is why it's just a horrible deck. No blue mana. Also, I don't have Innocent Blood or Shieldred's Edict, so I'm going to mulligan. Alright, I have Shieldred's Edict. I'm going to keep again. Uh, what's my worst land? It's one of these two. I'm going to use Blood Crypt. They have mold. I was about to say, I think I'm actually going to let them hit me twice, just so I can miscast a slip out back, but the fact that they played their ethereal armor, they're, they're about to concede.
Maybe they will play it out, but I really don't like their chances, because their deck is full of ley lines. And they only have one mana and no cards. Another Giganta Gamer. I'm anticipating... We're at the Red Wizards. Possible that I'm going to get a ten impact lately a kill. It's really, it's pretty hard to pull off against their deck though. They have a lot of. ways to kill Lelia. Especially in game one. They kept the hand with no one drop creatures, which is gonna. My hand's gonna be pretty good against that, probably. Although, if they just have like a bunch of expressive iterations. The game plays out slowly, and they have enough time to use them all. That'll be kind of bad for me. I think it's better for me to try to do this all in one turn, where they're tapped out potentially. Like, if I just hit them with a 3-3 three, three Lavia, they'll, they'll almost definitely just use their turn killing it. And then... I will have not gotten anywhere. Their hand seems horrible. That was their turn 3 play, was just put Gigante in my hand. Probably gonna die here. As long as I don't have two Jaces real fast. Come on, Jace. Uh, needed to hit a Jace there. The other thing is, even if I don't one shot them here, I'm just gonna have a gigantic creature, which their deck is not very good at killing like a 10 10. They probably have Odawara as their only out. The cards of the Exile. Alright, we we did fail to get the one shot, I think. I think it's gonna be okay. Oh, I'm off by one. Alright. It's gonna be a very sad day if I lose this game. Maybe an Odawara here. We could have Sakenzen as well. Sky Wizard. Spirit Warrior. Alright, you would think I'd have this figured out. It always comes down to Thoughtseize versus a different card. 
Don't go with Thoughtseize. This time I have Mystical Dispute in my deck. I know at points I've had Brotherhood's End. I think it's maybe underrating Mystical Dispute. I, I don't know exactly how many Snapcaster Mages the typical one of those decks has. It, it's I don't think it's... It's not a four of in all the builds. But their deck probably there boarding in blue cards and boarding out red cards would be my guess. So it, it seems okay. Okay, I guess I'll keep this. They have a really creature heavy hand. They do not. I'm basically just hoping they don't have a turn two Dread Horde Arcanist. At least they didn't have Flame of Anor. If they had Flame of Anor in my Maze Mind Tome, I would have cried. Crusher Giant. Whoa. Do I have a Snapcaster? This is probably going to hurt. Just let him wreck this charge again. I'm not at a healthy life total. Am I dead? Still have to do the math. So I just point out I'm going to two. So even if I find what's it called? Ritual of Soot or uh, Path to Peril, I'm very likely to die because I'll die to an untapped land. Tainted Pact. Pact and hit Virtue of Persistence. I still die to reckless charge. Much better hand. My previous hand, the game two hand, was definitely one that could have been a mulligan. Just not being able to kill creatures is, is really deadly in this matchup. I was very much hoping they had just kept the creature light hand. When the games start out like this, where they they're trying to play a more reactive game plan.
I don't want to... Well, I can't cast Ritual Sit next turn unless I draw an untapped land, and I also don't want to just want to getting it, having it get spell pierced and having that... Whatever that guy's... Balmor. Balmor, I do not want to just risk letting that spend a turn in play. Let's see if it has spell pierce. Seems like they got something. It might just be Wizard's Lightning. not have taken the Wizard's Lightning anyway. So, I don't know if they need to do that. I mean, I guess if they, their plan was to just do that no matter what. More power to them. Lightning me. Deck almost never gets to do this, but I think I'm gonna get to Snapcaster, Flame of Anor, and get two modes. I'll take the three from the Wizard's Lightning. Really well set up to kill creatures. But if I draw a land, I can just play Virtue of Persistence. If they have a spell pierce, it would be sad, but it has something to do with my mana. I do not have a creature land. That Restless Reef is pretty good at hiding in my lands. live, especially when I know they have Reckless Charge in their hand. Might be tempting to just try to cast Virtue of Persistence, but I do not like letting them untap with that card. go for Snapcaster Flame of the Nor, I'll actually respond with Tainted Pact and try to find something that uh, can stop that. This would be Snapcaster Consider. I'm actually still in the market to try to stop it. If I hit a Jace, I'm just going to keep the Jace, though.
Well, they didn't even kill the Snapcaster. They're that confident. That it doesn't matter. It seems wrong to me. The Innocent Blood has certainly been very awkward this game. But I think... I only have two creatures in my deck right now, and I drew both of them. So it's gonna happen sometimes. I'm gonna have Wizard Lightning the Rusko to go to three. They have to have Spell Pierce in their hand the way they've played this game. Or maybe negate or uh, mystical dispute. Mystical dispute might make sense. Bet they're regretting not having killed the Snapcaster at this point when they could have. I think I'm not even going to attack with the Snapcaster. The Hall of Storm Giants will kill them next turn. I know they have Reckless Charge in their hand. Yeah, definitely now that I have Virtue of Persistence as well, it, it makes no sense to attack. The deck is definitely still 100% capable of killing me with a Reckless Charge here. Honestly, if, it, if they just have two Symmetry Sages, I die. Okay. Okay. Got a wizard's lightning now too. I don't know that there was anything I could have done about that, because even if I'd attacked them, they would they had enough mana to win without that. I guess I now, if I'd saved the Edict, that wouldn't have done anything, because then they still would have had the Bone Crusher Giant. I 
Well, I hope you enjoyed that. That was a, a decent run. Kind of a tough way to lose. I thought I was, well, I was an untapped phase away from winning that game, I would say. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.